And imagine the inhales from the inside, just massaging any places of unnecessary tension, inviting them to be seen, recognized, and then softened. Exhale, you might imagine that tension that you've softened, the residue of it, and it travels downstream and is released. You could imagine this process, even this very simple breath, as if you are doing the housekeeping chores, taking out the garbage, the recycling, the yard debris. And as you're doing that, you're likely to feel more present for your practice, which, as I said last night, then we come to learn at a certain part in our journey that we don't want to be causing the garbage, recycling, and yard debris to accumulate in us. So we shift our the lifestyle, our rhythm, our food, our sleep, so that we don't come to the yoga mat with a lot of debris, with a heavy residue to let go of. So how we arrive is like at a different level of elevation on the mountain. And of course, yoga, like mountains, welcomes us to begin wherever we are showing up. Please bring your hands together at your heart. And we're going to chant Asatoma Satgamaya. Let's begin. Oh. Asatoma Satgamaya. Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya. Red your mouth, um, red gamaya. Oh, at the tama sad gamaya. Tama so majo dear gamaya. Red your mouth, um, red Gamaya. Oh, Asatoma Sad Gamaya. Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya. Red Yodama Amritam Gamaya. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Hari Om. Shri Guru Pyo Namaha. Hari Om. And with your exhale, you may bow your head to your heart. Release your hands. Please open your eyes. So I'd like to speak for a couple minutes about yoga philosophy laid into the system of the chakras. So I'm referencing a couple of things from this past week in our weekly classes. And I'm going to add something to that structure right now. So at the base chakra, the warrior's name is Sahadeva. And one of the imperatives there is that we recognize our interconnectedness with all things. That everything and everyone is our own. And that we are implored to care for the welfare of all, everything and everyone. And that all, everyone else, is also caring for us and the whole. So when we say caring for the welfare of all beings, we're not actually leaving ourselves out. 
we're living as a tribe there, we are also being cared for. And one of the other imperatives of the first chakra is that we practice a healthy restraint. And the restraints are called the yamas. We practice a healthy restraint of ourself so that we, we live in this society, in this community, with ahimsa, satya, brahmacharya, asteya, aparigraha. So the absence of harm, the fullness of truthfulness, the honesty. Living in a healthy relationship with our vitality and the vitality of others. A commitment to not take that which is not ours, so non-stealing. And then also non-grasping or non-hoarding, non-accumulating. Not having a huge mound of possessions that you have to keep after all the time. So parigraha means non-possessiveness or non-grasping, non-hoarding. So these two imperatives, it's one for restraint, is like the yamas. And what we're doing when we come to the yoga and that is actually restraining ourselves to our yoga practice. So you're not right now digging a ditch and you're not right now doing your taxes. You're not at this very moment caring for a loved one who's ill. You're here on your yoga mat. So that this time replenishes us for those other duties in our society, in our community. Well, the second chakra, his name is Nakula, like my kitty. I named him after the second yoga chakra, the water element. And because he's very fluid, and he's very, you know, uh, limp and floppy, like water in a, in a cat form. Uh, so Nakula's duty is to then cause us to implore us to adhere to the yogic principles. And the principles of the second chakra are the niyamas. So how we are in relationship with ourselves. And the five classical niyamas include saucha, santosha, tapas, Vadyaya, Ishvari Pranidhana. And those last three are what I spoke about in the Dharma session last night. So Saucha, cleanliness, like a clean diet, clean living, a clean space to practice in. Cleanliness in our relationships to the best of our ability. And then Santosha, contentment. And not contentment because we did all that cleaning, so it can add to this feeling of contentment, but contentment like recognizing the enoughness of the present moment, being content with what is, so reducing the grasping and aversion. And then we come to tapas, sadhyaya, and ishvari pranidhana. You're following okay so far? You can nod your heads, okay, great, thanks. You can also like make hand gestures like, no, I'm not getting it, or like, oh, I don't, I don't understand, whatever, because you're tiny again, so you have to give me, thank you, Kate. <laughs> like a Billy Joel concert or something, right, from way back <laughs> in high school. Uh, so I want to place these three, tapas, svadhyaya, ishvari, pranidhana, I want to place them on the chakra system for you. So tapas means discipline, and we can associate it with the first two chakras. Svadhyaya is the process of self-study, which is dependent upon the phase called tapas. If we don't have enough clarity of mind from the, the discipline, we cannot use a clear mind for svadhyaya. And it's not recommended to practice self-study from a very messy mind, from a disturbed mind. But svadhyaya, we, we would place it at the third chakra. So tapas is still here. Now we add svadhyaya. We are going to study ourselves and our mind patterns, our habits, our inclinations, our propensities, which is one of Pema Chodron's favorite words the propensities that we have. We see them here at the third chakra. And it's our um, imperative there to burn the seeds of the unhelpful mind habits. This is the fire element here. Vajaya is also at the heart where we ask of ourselves, can we see ourselves in others? Can we see others in ourselves? Can we have a sense of compassion for the human condition? This is self unto self. To see that from the heart chakra, we have to have done the work at the third chakra, the place where we feel like our sense of self has to be defended, promoted, decorated, <laughs> and so on. It has to be guarded sometimes or justified. So we have to do that work here at the third chakra to come up to the fourth chakra, to have that sense of the interconnected interbeingness 
of the heart and Svadhyaya will come up to the throat where we then speak. And at the fifth chakra, we have this imperative to speak clearly and truthfully, even if it raises a sense of conflict in somebody else, such as when we speak clearly what is true. I was speaking this last night about having uh, clear boundaries in a family system. Somebody else might feel confused or conflicted. How is it that my friend I've known is speaking a new clear truth for herself and I'm feeling uneasy. We still have this duty to speak what is clear and true in a loving way, in a compassionate way. Even if the other person has a momentary confusion or conflict, because it's possible that our speaking will raise both of us up to a new level of understanding ourselves. And then we can place Ishvari Pranidhana, which means the surrender. We can place that at the throat, at the sixth chakra, and at the seventh chakra. We will be going through all these chakras in the course of the summer, but I wanted to place this for you for this morning's practice because we're going to stay down at the first and second chakra, the landscape where we have earth and water, and it could become very useful mud from which things are growing, or it could become the mud in which we are stuck. I am always amused and will not forget that I had this experience of walking in the Pacific Northwest here at Brightonbush in a pair of rain boots and walking into the spot where you put your foot down and all you get out is your foot and not your boot. And then what are you going to do? <laughs> because the boot is in the thick mud down there <laughs> and you don't want to put your sock on the mud nearby. You have to suddenly keep your balance. You weren't planning on it. You didn't get your shoe. Oops. So this experience I've I've had in the Pacific Northwest more than back home in, in New York when I was there. So this process, we don't want the mud to be something that we're getting stuck in. We want this mud to be what we flourish from. It's, it's the mud from which the lotus blooms like that. I'm so delighted that you're chatting in there and I have to confess that I cannot see it from here. <laughs> I cannot read that from here. It pops up briefly and it's extremely tiny. <laughs> so I will, I'll check it later when I have an opportunity to do so. Okay, so on behalf of this mud not getting stagnant, uh, please stay in your comfortable seat or shake your legs out and then return to your seat. We're gonna do a little bit of funny on them. I also have to say that I have no idea what time it is and I can't see the clock. Okay. Um, is your phone within reach? Mm -hmm. Maybe I could use it as a clock because I won't be able to read your text. I didn't bring a clock to see what time it is while I'm teaching you guys. All right, there we go. Great, thank you. Alrighty, taking your seat, please clasp your hands and push the heels of the hands straight down. Lengthen up through your spine. And then also gaze down. Come back into the Ujjayi breath, please. Exhale completely and draw in the base of the low belly towards your sacrum and up towards the solar plexus. And then inhale, raise your hands from low to middle to high and raise your gaze with your knuckles. Exhale, push out and gaze to your left. Follow your left thumb out to the T-shape. Palms face up. Inhale, rise up and gaze up. Exhale, push out and gaze with your right thumb out to the right. Palms face up. Inhale, follow your thumb back up to center. Clasp the hands, push up and gaze down. Inhale, gaze up. And now exhale, press out, close your eyes and return on the Harabanda, place your hands out over your knees. And then inhale, roll up like a cow pose spine. Include a little back bend, the hands can be supported by the knees. Exhale, curl down like your cat pose spine. Inhale, roll up. Exhale, curl down. So in each case, 
you're using the hands on the knees to stabilize your pose. So when you inhale to go up, roll your chest forward and up and then lean back like a little back bend. And exhale, curl down and lean back in the lower spine. Twice more. Last one. Rise up to your seat. Return your palms one to the left of the other. And notice even the subtle changes that you've already initiated. To prevent the mud from taking over, place your hands on your shoulders. We want healthy, unctuous mud, but not to, not to get stuck there. This is Kapalabhati side to side. Come to center, exhale completely, and inhale, hands on your knees, go up. And then bring your head to Jalandahar Bandha as you suspend the inhalation. Release the Bandha, then exhale smoothly and completely. Let's repeat that, please. Hands to your shoulders. And begin. Come to center, exhale completely, hands over your knees. Inhale to go up. Suspend, bring your head to Jalandahar Bandha. Exhale completely. Where you are sitting, cross your left hand over your right shoulder. Let there be a little pressure of the arm down against the chest. Keep your right hand around behind you. Use a block on the floor if you need to. And as you roll your right shoulder back, let that guide your left arm and your upper torso into the twist. 
Look over your right shoulder, please. And come to the ujjayi breath. As you're gazing over the right shoulder, even if the eyes are closed, as you're gazing out in your imagination, try to sense the phrase, everyone and everything. Everyone and everything. And then exhale, come around to center, and you can use the phrase, including you, or you can say, including me. So everyone and everything, and you come to say to yourself, including me, which means including you. And press your right hand to your left shoulder, sweep the left arm around behind you. And as you twist your left shoulder back, let that guide your right hand, right forearm, right shoulder. Gaze over your left shoulder and again use the phrase, everyone and everything. And when you exhale to come around, you can say to yourself, including me. I'm using that pronoun so you say it to yourself that way. Everyone and everything, including you. Please place one palm in the lap of the other and we'll go down to the root for the chant lum and then we'll be at the second chakra for the chant lum. It's five times and we do it five times. The M sound on the last of the lums, the M sound on the fifth one, you let that vibrate, let it vibrate through you. Lum, 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 lum. Lum, 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 lum. Lum, lum. Lum, 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 lum. Lum, 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 lum. Bring attention to the second chakra. One, 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 
Take them to your hands and knees in table points. If you like padding for your knees, of course you can do that. Hands on your knees and your situation. When you come to your hands and knees, place yourself somewhere where downward dog pose is going to make sense on the front of your mat at some point. Um, in this table pose, let's start with the hands shoulder width apart and inhale to cat to feel the spine after that first part of your practice. Exhale to cow pose. And then step your right hand well forward of your left hand and press your fingerprints and thumb into the mat or the floor. Draw your left elbow down to the floor. This is called one arm puppy dog pose. As you reach your hips back, glide your right sitting bone a little further back than your left sitting bone. Press down with your left palm. Inhale, float into table pose. Step your left hand well forward and come down to the other side. So you can press the four fingers and thumb of your left hand, your left paw into the floor. Reach back a little more with your left sitting bone. You can even swivel your feet and your shins to the right. And as you're breathing in, sense the left lower belly and the interior of the pelvis near to the sacrum. And press into your right palm. Inhale, float yourself back to table pose. Okay, now I'm going to ask us to take the right hand forward of the left hand. So cross it on the diagonal on your mat. Turn it upside down then. And when you come down, come to the back of your right wrist, the back of your right forearm. You might rest your head on your upper arm. Swivel your feet and your shins to the left. You've given yourself a side bend and a forward bend here and a little bit of a twist to the left. You can press into your left hand to support that twisting action. Draw the right sitting bone back as you breathe in. Press into your left palm. Inhale in one action, return to table pose. And then take the left hand forward, turn to the back of your left hand and come down. You can swivel your feet to the right, shin to the right. You may rest your head on your left upper arm. And you can keep the pressure of the right hand firm against the floor. So that bit of twisting is actually happening in the thoracic spine. Press into your right palm. Inhale, rise back to table pose. And now curl the toes under and let's reach into downward facing dog pose. And in your downward dog pose, place your feet as wide as your yoga mat. Press down through both arms so you're actively pushing away from the floor. Roll both heels to your right and stretch the left side waist. Tippy toe and pivot your heel to the other side. Stretch the right side waist. And then you can improvise your own rhythm and cross for going side to side. I will ask you just to keep the arms stable. 
so that the improvisation or the swivel is in your spine, especially your lumbar spine, your sacrum, your hips, your legs, your feet. But keep the arms stable so that the exploration is coming from a place of stability. The next time you're passing through center with your hips and your heels, go ahead and lower your knees to the floor and raise your arms up in Vajrasana. Interlace the fingers and push up. And then side bend a little bit to your right, keeping the left hip stable on your left heel. Inhale, rise up to center. You're like a tall blade of grass. Exhale, side bend to your left. Let the breeze of the breath be what moves you. Inhale up. Exhale to the right. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, go left. And inhale, glide up to center once more. And then exhale, arms out to the side as you come down. And you can pause in Vajrasana. You come back to this phrase. You just can feel it in your body or your heart. Everything and everyone, including you. You say to yourself, including me. Now we're gonna start a process of including Salambhasana in the sequence. So for knees, chest, and chin pose, when I say that, I know that it's not everyone's easeful experience, but what it looks like when you come down to knees, chest, and chin, it's a little heart bow like this to the floor. And then when you scoot forward, you're automatically on the belly and the pelvis. And then when you scoot back, you don't have to move the knees or the hands just the spine and then we come up to cow pose. Now, just to say, this used to be called girl push-ups in middle school. <laughs> Some of you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's start in the distance that you know you need for the inchworm or knees, chest, and chin pose. Once you know that, reach back to child's pose to begin from here. And we're gonna inhale, roll to cat. Exhale, cow pose, heart forward. Inhale, inchworm pose. Exhale, scoot forward, low cobra. Arms straight back now. Inhale, salambhasana. Exhale, low cobra, place your palms under your shoulders. Inhale, knees, chest, and chin, inchworm pose. Exhale, cow pose. Inhale, cat, plant the toes. Exhale, child pose. Inhale, cat, we're gonna add to the sequence. Exhale, cow pose, raise your right arm forward. Inhale, cat pose. Exhale, cow pose, raise your left arm forward. Inhale, cat pose. Exhale, cow pose, both hands on the floor. Inhale, inchworm pose. Exhale, low cobra. Okay, inhale, both arms back, Salambhasana. Exhale, gaze to your right. Inhale, left arm forward. Exhale to center. Exhale, gaze left. Inhale, right arm forward. Exhale to center. 
Place your hands beneath your shoulders. Inhale, high cobra. Exhale, low cobra. Inhale, inchworm pose. Cow pose. Inhale, cat. Exhale, child's pose. One more time, we're going to add inhale to cat. Cow pose, raise your right arm and your left leg. Inhale, cat pose. Cow pose, raise your left arm and your right leg. Inhale to cat. Cow pose, raise both arms and legs. Just kidding. <laughs> Inhale, inchworm pose. Low cobra. Inhale, both arms back, both legs up, Salambasana. We exhale, gaze right. Inhale, left arm forward, left leg down. Exhale to center, both legs up, both arms back. We exhale, gaze left. Inhale, right arm forward, right leg down. Exhale to center. Place your hands, inhale, high cobra. Exhale, low cobra. Inhale, inch one. Exhale, cow pose. Inhale to cat. And exhale, child's pose. In child's pose, please walk up to Vajrasana, up to Mali. Rest your hands in your lap. Take this moment of stillness. Feel the quality of earth, which is rooting and stabilizing. The quality of water, which is our ability to open to the unknown, to explore, to move outside of our comfort zone. transition now to Prasarata Padatanasana. Yeah. <laughs> it's great to my mat. Like nobody can see the little bit of crooked mat that I just had except for me and I had to straighten it. So that's what I when I say we have mental patterns, that's one of mine. Okay, so come down to Prasarata Padatanasana. And reach back as you're able to to interlace your fingers at the small of your back. Roll your shoulders open. And now when we inhale, let's keep the legs really stable. When we inhale, glide your heart forward. A little bit like Salambasana and Cobra. And then exhale to bow towards your legs. The spine can be a little bit like the cat pose or the child's pose. Inhale, glide forward. You can say to yourself, everyone and everything. And exhale for a deep bow. You may say, including me. You could say, inhale forward, everyone and everything. When you exhale to bow, you might say, is my own, which means the equivalent of all my relations. Let's do it twice more, please.
One more time. Release your hands to the floor. Come up to your fingertips in your Prasarvata Pratanasana. Turn your right foot directly out to the right. Take the left heel slightly back to the left. You look a little bit like an Egyptian cave painting with the two feet. Bend your right knee and take your right hand up against the inner right knee. Lengthen your right inner thigh, please. You can keep the left hand either on the floor or on a block where it was in your Prasarita Pratanasana. So the torso is really aiming forward, even though your right leg is going to the right. Let's bring awareness to the upper inner right groin, please. And as you breathe in, try lengthening your right inner thigh towards your right knee. And exhale, imagine that you can increase the tone right behind your right sitting bone. Now see if you can maintain the right knee on its own. Place your right fingertips back on the floor in the prasarata position. Keep aiming the right inner thigh long and toning your right outer hip right near the sitting bone. When you next inhale, try this on. You can open to your left for a twist. So the first chakra is that sense of stability. The second chakra requires little willingness to explore the adventure part. And then exhale, return your left fingertips to the floor, straighten your right leg, turn your toes in. Turn the left toes out, turn the right heel slightly out, and then bend your left knee and take your left hand up against the upper inner left thigh. To set ourselves on course for exploration, and like spontaneity or star. Our ability to sense the unknown, it does help to have the niyamas on board. When I go for a journey or an exploration, I don't want to go as the um, toxic, unsettled, grasping aversion, clinging version of myself out onto that journey. But in the same way, as you prepare, knowing that there's a little journey coming, stabilize your left heel, toe, pinky toe, and outer heel. And as you lengthen the inner left thigh towards your left knee, tone the left sitting bone close to the tailbone. Keeping the breath smooth, see if you might be able to keep the left knee as it is on its own from the strength of your left outer hip. Place your left fingertips down, and when you're ready to, inhale, twist to your right. And in twisting, see if you can sense the journey from the inside. And then follow your exhale, the lower back down. And return your feet to Prasarata Pratanasana. Go ahead and bow towards the legs. Keeping both legs toned and strong. When you're ready to shift your hands up to your hips and rise up with your inhalation. And let's go heel toe, heel toe to center. You can in mountain pose. And in mountain pose, if you can sense the feet arches, the inner edges of the legs, and up into the pelvic floor. So there is a relationship there. Everything and everyone as your own. 
you can say everything and everyone as my own, or including me, you can use the pronoun me. Or you can say the phrase, are my relations, everything and everyone, all my relations. We're going to prepare for Suri Namaskar with one salutation. So what I'm saying there about the nature of the journey is when we move through the stages of yoga, we're going to have to touch the unknown. In other words, we're going to have, we get the chance to both come back to that, which is already within us and which is most deeply familiar once we remember it. But along the way, there's going to be these little inner frontiers that kind of feel like the unknown, the unfamiliar. We are subtracting the conditioning and returning to what is most deeply true. But sometimes that feels scary because it also has become unknown to us when we got into the journey of conditioning and mental mayhem. So as we embark on the journey, like for example, if you were going on a journey, you'd probably wanna pack your suitcase thoughtfully. You wouldn't put all the dirty laundry in there, all the mishmash. So we have first the the yamas to help us be organized in our society and the niyamas to help us stabilize for the journey that we are on as a yogi. So this sun salutation, so we're going to start, we're going to use the inch horn pose. For those of you who are still learning it, you're going to be having some tricep muscles. They will be good for the gardening as well. So step to the front of your mat, please. Bring your hands together at your heart. Let's come into the ujjayi sound. And as you next inhale, drop the hands down, take them wide and up overhead, please look up. Exhale, bend your knees and sit down. Inhale in chair pose, we're gonna keep the knees bent. And then exhale, drape your torso over your thighs, wrap your arms around behind your shins and inhale, straighten the legs any amount that your legs allow you to. And then exhale, touch your hands to the floor and prepare for stepping back. Inhale the heart forward, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, left toes straight back. Give it the left heel down and rise up to warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. And then exhale, glide forward, reach forward with both arms like two arrows, lightly touch the floor and inhale, step to plank. May exhale, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, low cobra. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, cow. Exhale, dog pose. Inhale, raise your left leg high. Exhale, left foot forward. Inhale, rise, sit at the back heel, Virabhadrasana one. And exhale, reach forward with both arms like arrows. Touch the floor, inhale to plank. Exhale, knees, chest and chin. Inhale, low cobra. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, cow. Exhale, downward facing dog pose. Inhale, raise your right leg high. Exhale, right foot forward, left foot forward. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale for a deep bow towards the leg. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to the heart. In round number two, inhale, arms up. Exhale, deep chair pose. 
Inhale while you're here. Exhale, drape your torso over your thighs so the abdomen and the thighs are touching. And then any amount on the inhale, you can straighten the legs. Exhale, place your hands. Preparing to step backwards, inhale, glide your heart forward. This time, right foot back first. Pivot the right heel, warrior one. Virabhadrasana one. Exhale, reach forward, the arms like arrows. Inhale to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, low cobra. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, downward facing dog pose. Okay, inhale, raise your right leg high. Exhale, right foot forward. Inhale, Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. Exhale, reach forward the arms like arrows. Inhale to plank. Exhale, knees, chest and chin. Inhale, low cobra. Exhale, knees, chest and chin. Inhale, cow. Exhale, Baba Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, raise the left leg. Exhale, left foot forward, right foot forward. Inhale, your heart forward. And exhale to bow towards the legs. Inhale, rise up. And exhale to mountain pose. Let yourself stand really still. The warrior one is, Naku, is Sahadeva. Warrior two is Nakula. Keeping your right foot planted, bend your knees slightly. Take your left foot and step backwards to warrior two. And if you know your warrior two pretty well, you likely stepped right back to it. But take a peek. <laughs> Just check and see that you got your feet lined up. Like check and see you zipped the suitcase. <laughs> you have the tickets. You are prepared. You then sweep the arms wide and gaze out over your right fingertips. And let's encourage the pose to become stable and tranquil. The word for that in Sanskrit is sthita. sthita. So press into your left big toe, fan the other four toes out from there and press them down. Find the inner and outer left heel. Tone the upper inner left thigh. Take the left sitting bone very slightly towards the right sitting bone. Lengthen the upper inner right thigh towards the knee. And as you root into your right foot, tone right outside the back of the right sitting bone. So that creates the structure for the stability of your warrior two at the level of the legs. And the tranquility is up to you in the mind. And as you sustain a yoga pose, there's an opportunity as there are in moving practices too, but in the sustained pose, there's this opportunity to see what parts of the mind come to land like birds landing on the arms of, the, of your pose as if they were landing on the trees. What thoughts are coming down to land and visit you while you're holding warrior two? 
And try to sense yourself, not as those thoughts, but as this deeper essence and this deeper commitment. With an inhale, start pressing into your right foot and begin to bring your palms toward each other. And then complete that, let's make the feet parallel. Turn your left foot out now and the right heel slightly back. Come into warrior two, going to your left. And gaze over your left fingers or thumb. Put your mind into your right big toe. Flare the other four toes from there. Press into the inner and outer right heel. And tone the upper inner right thigh. As you gently glide your right sitting bone towards your left sitting bone, you can tend to level the pelvis a bit. And lengthen through your left inner thigh out towards your knee. And use your left foot wisely on the floor right now. Yeah. And sense sort of from the mind, even though you're breathing and holding steady with the legs, are there birds that are landing on the shoulders and the branches of the arms? What sorts of thoughts come down to land? And the second question then is, how are you responding to those thoughts? And with an inhalation, start to press into your left foot and gently straighten your left leg, start to join your palms towards each other. And with the exhale, turn your feet to parallel. And come back down to Prasarata Paratanasana. And shift either to your right or your left and step into downward dog pose. And then shift from your downward dog pose back to Vajrasana, back to kneeling. Place one hand in the lap of the other. You come from an expansive pose like that to a consolidated pose. Notice what you consolidate in terms of your attention or also your intention. And sense yourself. Please lie on your back with room to be a starfish. Lie on your back with your knees bent to begin. Yeah. Okay, when you lie down, knees bent like this. We're going to be hugging the knees to the chest and using a kind of squeeze and release technique. And then we'll have the limbs like a starfish and use a squeeze and release technique again. And let's start by bringing the right knee into your chest, please. You can hold your hands behind your right hamstring. Okay. So keeping the left knee flat on the floor for now, sorry, left foot flat on the floor, the left knee bent, that's fine for the moment. Let's take a deep breath in. And then exhale, curl your head up towards your right knee and your right knee towards your head. Curl it up and squeeze the body like a sponge. 
And then inhale, lay your shoulders and your head back down, keeping your right knee where it is. And exhale to squeeze back up, your head towards your knee and your knee towards your head. Use the inhale to roll your head and shoulders back down. And do that three times more in sequence. So each exhale, your curl is Each inhale, you roll your shoulders and your head back down. According to your rhythm, yeah. And you finished five times with the right knee, then bring your left knee up and we're gonna change sides. When the knee is up to the chest and you're exhaling to squeeze, this is really like the process is really about the deep inner belly. It's not so much if your head can actually reach your knee. So you exhale to curl up, let it squeeze like a sponge. And inhale to glide down with your upper back and head. Do it five times total. Yeah, working at your own pace. To be consecutive with these means you have a lot of uh, leadership with the breath. You're able to really partner with your body. No sense of coercion. And when you have completed that five times, then touch your foot back to the floor. And let the lower belly really relax now, like the, the innards of the low belly can be water, fluid, relax, free from tension. Now take the legs out straight on the mat and make your feet as wide as your yoga mat. Take the arms out to the side, about the same distance that the feet are from each other. Put the hands out that far from the face. Okay, this is called the starfish, uh, called the starfish activity. And it's gonna be a, like a progressive muscle relaxation as well. So when you, the first one is squeeze your right foot and lift your right leg and squeeze your right butt muscle. You don't have to lift the leg that high. Give it a good strong squeeze. Breathe in, and then lower your right leg to the floor. You can drop it. Squeeze the left foot, engage your left leg, squeeze the knee, squeeze your left butt, lift your left leg a couple of inches from the floor. Breathe in, and then drop it to the ground. Squeeze the right fist, right arm, right shoulder. Raise your hand a couple inches from the floor. Breathe in and then drop it. Left wrist, left arm. Give it a good squeeze. Raise your hand a couple inches from the floor. And then drop it down. Okay, now left foot and right hand, squeeze them both. Squeeze the left leg, squeeze your right arm. Right shoulder, left butt, raise both your right arm and your left leg up from the floor. Give a good strong squeeze. Inhale. Exhale, drop down. Left hand and right foot. Squeeze your right leg and right butt, left arm, left shoulder. Raise your left arm and your right leg. Breathe in. And then exhale, drop it down. Okay, both feet, both hands, and your face. Squeeze your face also. Tone the belly, lift both legs a little bit and both arms and your head. And breathe in, squeeze the face. 
And exhale, go down. Now only the face. Breathe in and squeeze towards your nose. Breathe out and stretch your whole face, open the eyes, stick your tongue out, open the jaw. Squeeze the face with your inhale. Open with the exhale. And then get very still. Invite the whole body to be like a, a relaxed and radiant star in the ocean. Nothing to do, only resting there. Everything becomes deeply still and quiet. Like Wendell Berry once said, like circles on water, and everything becomes deeply still and quiet.
and an open mind and true. We need the meddling. Everything become deeply clean. Remain in the fullness of the known wonder. Quietly notice the breath without losing your mental stillness. And you can lightly wiggle the toes and the fingers. You can make a thoughtful transition back to sitting in your meditation seat. Just one hand on the lap of the other. Coming down to the root, down to the base chakra. The sound is LAM, L-A-M. LAM, 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 LAM. LAM, 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 LAM. Lum, 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 lum. 
And for the second chakra, the thumb is VAM, spelled V-A-M. VAM, VAM. VAM.
between your hands up to your head. So this is called Anjali Mudra. There's a place in the center of the palms that doesn't touch. That's where we place the offering from the heart. When we put one palm on the heart and the other on top of that, it's like a personal mudra. I'm sure it has a name somewhere in the world. When we place one palm in the bowl of the other palm, like this, we're making like a tiny little meditation bowl there. Make sure you can put your intention. So from the root of the second, you place your intention in the center of your palms. And inhale that just up to the third chakra. We're going to bring the fire of the third chakra toward this intention. And bring it up to the fourth chakra, the air element. When the wind takes the intention, it goes everywhere. It goes without conditions. And place this intention in your heart. From the heart, place it into the centers of your palms. Come to Anjali Mudra. And you can bring it up to the sixth chakra, bow your head to your hands. You may touch the thumbs between the eyebrows, the, the thumb knuckles. Bring it back down to the heart and the air element, the wind element then we open the palms and the wind takes the intention unconditionally to everyone and everything it also means that everyone else's intention is coming to us unconditionally so receiving the offering of each other and place that back in your hands and against your heart and then back down to the third chakra where we have to keep the light on, the fire, and down to the second, and down to the root. Thank you everyone for sharing those mudras and also Lucien, thank you for sharing it with us too. I can see you're very tiny, both of you, but I can see that you are participating. That's very nice. We'll finish with Om Shanti. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.